A bone mapping caliper can be used to determine the bone thickness. A minimum thickness of 4 mm is necessary to ensure that the implant is surrounded by a minimum of 1 mm of bone. The thickness of the mucosa is measured with a periodontal probe. Since the measurements for this patient are consistently below 2.5 mm, implants with a collar are chosen. Based on the radiographical diagnosis, the vertical bone height, as well as the horizontal one in this case, can be determined. Two metal markers were fixed on the existing denture Regio 5, referencing the position of the foramen mentalis, which you can see on the radiography. The bone height of the jaw is above 20 mm, so an implant height of 15 mm has been chosen. The location of implants may be planned digitally. The implant should have equal distances with a minimum of 5 mm. A core principle of the surgical protocol is the minimally invasive procedure, starting with local anesthesia. Ubistocene 1 to 100,000 is recommended. Anesthesia is administered in the area of the planned implant sites. The transfer of the distal implantation sites is done by using the template. With a probe, bleeding points are set on the mucosa. Pilot drilling is performed using a drill with a diameter of 1.1 mm. It is a disposable drill for single use only. Drilling should be done with external cooling using sterile saline solution. To ensure safe guidance, the contra-angle handpiece should be supported on the power head. To prevent thermal damage to the bone bed, the drill must be moved up and down. This also enables more efficient cooling. The primary goal of pilot drilling is penetration of the cortical bone. Depending on bone quality, drill depths of between one and two-thirds of the length of the implant thread are necessary. The level of resistance decreases perceptibly on penetration of the cortical bone. Cut pilot drills can be used as parallelization posts. The implants are delivered sterile in a small plastic tube. The cap serves to both take it out of the packaging and to position the implant. The first few turns can be executed using the cap until the thread grips the bone. Then the cap can be removed. In principle, all implants must be inserted slowly, with a short break after each quarter turn to prevent thermal damage and allow bone compression. The finger driver allows a sensitive insertion and minor corrections to the angulation if necessary. Once the resistance gets too high, the next instrument, the winged thumb wrench, is used. The winged thumb wrench allows higher forces to be applied. For the last windings and final position, the graduated torque wrench is used, thereby determining the final torque for control. In order to receive primary stability for immediate loading, 35 and 45 Newton centimeters are needed. The wrench head must be stabilized with a finger in order to prevent shearing forces as a result of tilting. The rest of the implants are set in the same way as described before. Using the control OPG, the correct positioning of the implants is checked a final time. The prosthesis is supported by the soft tissue and the rubber O-ring, the principle of the MDI soft loading concept. There is no direct contact between the metal housing and the O-ball, which prevents the implant from being overloaded. The ground-out prosthesis prepared by the technician is filled with a permanently soft silicon material. For example, secure soft reliner, and an impression is taken. The imprints of the ball attachments can now be seen clearly. The imprints of the ball attachments are now transferred to the prosthetic resin using a burr. Following transfer of the positions, the silicon is removed again. The recesses are extended amply as per the marked positions in order to ensure contact-free seating of the metal housings in the prosthesis. 
Once a tension-free fit has been achieved for the entire prosthesis, it must then be ensured that no prosthetic resin is able to flow under the metal housings during polymerization. So-called blockout shims made of silicon are cut to obtain small rings. Their height should be no greater than the distance between the gingiva and the metal housing. Now the silicon ring and the metal housing are fitted. If correctly seated, it should be possible to rotate them easily. Polymerization is prepared in the next step. The recesses of the prosthetic resin are coated with an adhesive. Dry for 30 seconds before filling with cold curing resin. Secure Hard Pickup is an acrylic-based self-curing tissue-colored resin. Its viscous consistency makes it easy to apply. The recesses in the prosthesis should be filled to about two-thirds with the acrylate. The patient is requested to bite moderately for six to eight minutes. Correct occlusion is checked again. After removal of the prosthesis, the metal housings are secured in the desired position. Excess resin is removed and the prosthesis is polished. The edges of the housings and the O-rings should be visible. The finished prosthesis can now be fitted. Support and occlusion are checked again. The patient has been provided with an aesthetic and highly functional restoration with minimal surgery and comparatively simple prosthetic measures. Since immediate loading is possible, the patient benefits from an immediate improvement in his quality of life.